We're glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. We're going to start a new series today. We're going to be talking about the power of positive faith. Now, you know, I know some of you thinking, oh, not another sermon on faith. Well, you're probably the one that needs to hear it the most because you can't get enough of the Word of God. When it comes to faith, you know, God's Word is filled with faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we're going to talk about it, uh, the power of positive faith. I, I want you to uh, go with me to Romans, the fourth chapter, and let's notice verse 3. Paul says, For what saith the Scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Then if we come over to the twelfth uh, verse, it says, verse 13, I'm sorry, verse 13, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now notice the phrase, through the righteousness of faith. Now as we come down to verse 16, it says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. Now you ought to underline this verse in your Bible, this phrase, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. Now under the old law, you have to understand this, under the law it was a law of works. And no one could keep that law to the letter but Jesus. Jesus, the only man that ever kept that law. It says, therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace. In other words, the only way that you can enter into the grace of God is through faith. Now I remember hearing a story about uh, a fellow that died and went to heaven. He was standing before St. Peter. It's kind of humorous, but, but there's a real truth here. And uh, St. Peter said to him, uh, you have to have a thousand points to get into heaven. Well, he said, how do I get the points. He said, well, you tell me all the reasons that you should be admitted into heaven. Well, he started saying, well, I've been good to my neighbors. I have done good, uh, you know, for, for the poor. I have given to the poor. I have, and he went through everything that he could think of, and he thought, now, surely, surely I've got a thousand points. And he said, how am I doing? He said, that's one point. <laughs> well, he thought and he went through everything else that he could think that might make a difference. And, uh, and he, he said, how am I doing there? He said, well, that's two points. And uh, he said, my Lord, he said, it'd take the grace of God to get me in. He said, that's a thousand. <laughs> so, so that's what this scripture is telling you. The only way you're going to get in access into the grace of God is through faith. You can't do it by doing good works and what you've done. And you know, you ought to do good works, certainly, but it's not going to get you into heaven. Uh, it comes by faith. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. It's talking about the grace that's a gift of God, not the faith. There is a gift of faith, but it's talking about a gift of the Spirit. We're talking about accessing the uh, grace through faith. That's the only way that you have access to the grace of God. Now, grace is God's willingness to use His power and His ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. You don't want what you deserve. You want to plead mercy and grace because I'll tell you the truth, you can't get in by your goodness. You can't get in by doing good. Now, you ought to do good. But uh, here it reveals that we have access into the grace of God through faith. Now, let's read verse 13 again in Romans chapter 4. said, For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Therefore it is a faith, verse 16, Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is the law, but to that also which is the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now remember, we're talking about the power of positive faith. God taught Abraham how to operate in the power of positive faith. 
he taught him to call things that are not. Now, you might be thinking, well, what in the world are you talking about? Call things that are not. That means call things that are not yet manifest. You call for what is not manifest. Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about calling for the promise of God. This is the promise. This is the promises of God. In fact, the New Covenant, this New Testament, is the last will and testament of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every promise in this book was sealed. When Jesus died, it became yours. It's available to you, but you only have access to it through faith. Now, you hear people sometimes say that, well, you know, there's more to the Bible than faith. Well, that's absolutely right. There's a lot more to the Bible than faith, but none of the, uh, the Scriptures, none of the Bible will work for you unless you have faith in it. I mean, you have to believe it before it's going to do you any good. Just because you know it's there and know what it said doesn't mean that you're going to enter into the provision. And, and the power of positive faith is what God taught Abraham to operate in. Now, notice what he goes on to say here in Romans 3, verse 18. Who against hope, now he's talking about Abraham, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. When there was no hope, Abraham believed in hope. Now you might be saying, well, how in the world could you believe in something when there's not anything? Well, there was no natural hope. See, Abram is 99 years old, and uh, he didn't have the promised child. So there was no natural hope for him. But what did he do? He went to the Word of God and got some supernatural hope. Now, there's one thing you'll, you'll find out when you study these scriptures and about the story of Abraham, that Abram, his name was Abram at first, and Abram never did believe God the way Abraham believed God. Now, I know it's the same man. You understand that. But it's a different time frame. Abram was not fully persuaded, but Abraham was. And, and the key to that is understanding how God convinced him to be fully persuaded. Now, see, right here, it says, Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years of age, and neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He wouldn't consider those things to be paramount. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Now, he's, now remember, he's talking about Abraham. Not talking about Abram. Abram struggled with this thing. You go back in the Old Testament, you find out that Abram had the promise about 10 or 11 years when God appeared to him. <laughs> uh, he said, Lord, what will you give me seeing I go childless? In other words, what sign are you going to give me that this will ever come to pass, the promise that he would be uh, a blessing to all the nations of the world? He said, what will you give me seeing I go childless? God had just said to him in, in the previous chapters, he said, walk through the land, the promised land. See, that, that was a physical land to them. But you see, the promised land to us are the promises of the new covenant. He said, look, walk through it, get acquainted with it. I'm going to give you everything you can see. Now, the way we would take that as a parallel today to teach us some parallel truth is that this is our promised land, and God has given us everything you can see and conceive in this book promise in this book, if you receive it in your spirit, you can uh, be a partaker of the divine nature and live out the reality of the promise of God. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You can enter into that by believing and confessing to Jesus as your Lord, and certainly you ought to follow uh, the Lord in baptism. But you see, if you don't do that, you're not going to enter into it. So you have to be positive in your faith. You have to believe what the Word of God has set forth here. You can't say like I've heard so many people say, well, now, Brother Caps, here's the way I believe it. <laughs> and, you know, that's sometimes that's the reason they're in the situation they're in, because they believe it different from what the Word believed it. Now, he talks about Abram here. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform. Let me ask you something. Are you fully persuaded that what God has promised in this book, he is able and willing to perform? Now, you know, most people don't have any trouble believing that God's able to do it, but they have problems believing that he will do it for them. And see, you must be fully persuaded. If you're fully persuaded 
You believe that it's yours. You believe God has given it. Second Peter chapter 1 says, God hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now, how has he done that? Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Then he tells you how. Whereby, through the exceeding great and precious promises, by that, that by these you might be partaker of a divine nature. Notice he said you might be. In other words, you have to believe it. It's something you have to do about it. It's not going to happen to you just because it's in the Bible. It won't happen to you just because you know it's in the Bible. It takes positive faith to enter into the promise of God, and that's the way you enter into the grace of God, is through the power of positive faith. Now, uh, as you come down here to chapter 5 of, of Romans, uh, let's read two verses. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. How are we justified? By faith by faith in Jesus Christ, by faith in the blood of Jesus, by faith in His Word, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Now here again, this verse tells you that you only have access into the grace of God through faith. Now where does the faith come from? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17, Paul said, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Well, now he's saying that faith in God comes by hearing the Word of God. The power of that positive faith will cause you to enter into the grace of God. But there's so many people that say, well, yeah, I know the Bible said that, but nothing ever good happens to me, you know. I tell you, every, every, dear God, every time I get things going real good, the, the devil throws a monkey wrench in the deal, and, and it just blows up in my face. Nothing ever works out for me. Now, folks, that is the power of negative faith to destroy the promise of God and take it out of your life and keep you in doubt where you cannot enter into the promise of God. Can you see that? Some of you have been doing that. You've been saying how it is. Now, notice he taught Abraham to call things that are not as though they were. And you've been calling things that are as though they are and as they will be that way forever. And with your help, they will be that way forever. But you can change that through the power of positive faith. Hallelujah. Now, that's good news, isn't it? Now, remember, we're talking about the power of positive faith, not negative faith. I mean, you don't want to get into this negative faith. Now, now go with me over to Matthew's Gospel. In chapter 8, there's a classic example here of the power of positive faith. We we'll start with verse 5. When Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came a, um, to him a centurion being, uh, beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. <laughs> now, did you notice it didn't take long to talk Jesus into healing this man? You know, sometimes nowadays, folks have been taught that healing went out with the apostles. Oh, yeah, that happened in Bible days, but it didn't happen anymore. Well, if you believe that, it did pass away as far as you're concerned, but it didn't pass away as far as some believers concerned. If you believe it, it'll be a blessing to you. If you believe that God's still in the healing business because the Scripture says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, how are you going to rationalize the fact that people teach that healing went out with the apostles? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, let's follow this. Verse uh, 7 said, Jesus said unto him, I'll come and heal him. The centurion answered, said, But Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Now, notice this guy says, y You don't have to come to my house. Now, let me ask you something. If uh, Oral Roberts, you know, came to town, or Brother Kenneth Copeland, and and you was telling him about your friend that was sick, and he said, well, when this meeting's over, we'll go down to the hospital and, and, and lay hands on him and get him healed. Would you say, oh, no, no, brother, you don't have to do that. Just speak the word, and, and he'll be healed. Now, notice the power of this man's positive faith. He's saying, you don't have to go down there. Just speak the word. He knew that Jesus had authority to speak words because you see in the scripture where Jesus cast out the spirit with his word. Whether it's a spirit of infirmity, whether it's a spirit of sickness, whatever it is, he knew that Jesus had authority in his words. In other words, he knew that the word of God spoken in faith will produce results. Power of positive faith. 
spoke it in faith. Now notice what happened. He says, For I'm a man under authority, and having soldiers unto me, I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, to another come, and he cometh uh, to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Now do you realize that Jesus just stopped right in the middle of this thing and preached them a little sermon about this? He said, This is the greatest faith I've ever found in all of Israel. Now you do realize or maybe you don't realize that this centurion was a Roman centurion. He's a Gentile, and at this point, he doesn't even come under the covenant of God. See, the gospel was to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. And if you remember when Jesus was sending the disciples out, he said, Go not to any but to the house of Israel. Go not in the way of the Gentiles. In other words, the gospel was to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. So this man at this point did not even come under the covenant of God, but Jesus said the man had greater faith than all of the covenant people that he'd ever heard. Now, why did he have that faith? You know, the Bible says, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. One day I was reading this and I just, I just stopped and asked the Lord. I said, Now, Lord, why did this man, who is a Roman centurion, a Gentile, that didn't even come under the covenant at this point, how did he have greater faith than all the covenant people? And, and he said, Go back and read verse 9. The man tells you out of his own mouth why he had greater faith. I'm a man under authority, having soldiers unto me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth to another come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Now, see, he's a military man. And if, if there's anything you understand in the military, is when they say for you to do something, you do it. I mean, if it doesn't make any sense at all, I mean, if it's dig a ditch and cover it up, I mean, fill it back up, you know, it doesn't make any sense. But you, you, they teach you that so you'll obey on command regardless of whether it makes any sense or not because they may not have time to explain to you all the reasons why they tell you to do something in battle. So this man's a military man. He understands authority. And, and the Lord seemed to say to me at that time, he said, if my people understood authority the way this man understood authority, the authority of the Word, then they could have, they could operate in this same kind of faith that this man had. And, and so Jesus just stopped and preached him a sermon. Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith in Israel. I say unto you that many shall come from the east and from the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, now listen to this, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Now, this man had already believed. He was not trying to believe. He had already believed. He had already decreed. And the Scripture says, uh, Job, in the book of Job, says, Decree a thing, and it shall be established to you, and light shall shine upon your path. Now, he decreed a thing based on his authority, the authority, understanding the authority of the Word of God. Now, you realize Jesus was the Word personified. Scripture says, in the beginning was a Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John chapter 1. So he is the personification of the Word of God, and he knows he has authority. He knows his words have authority because he is the Word of God. So he said, Go thy way as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed the self same hour. Now there's some folks that I've met in, in my lifetime that if, if, if you had said that to, if Jesus said that to, their servant would die the self same hour because they believe the worst of every situation. You know, you hear them say such things like, Well, yeah, he does seem to be a little better, but you know, uh, uh, usually when he gets better, he gets worse. And, and you know, <laughs> like one fellow said, somebody said to him, How are you feeling today? Well, he said, I'm really feeling a little better today. But, but you see, when I feel better, it makes me feel worse because I know how bad I'm going to feel when I get over feeling so good. <laughs> now, now folks, that, that's the power of negative thinking and negative faith. But here he says, Go thy way as thou hast believed. So be it done unto you. Now you find Jesus making this statement are uh, comparable statements several places in the Scripture. That as you have believed, so be it done unto you. 
And what we believe, we speak, and what we speak, we believe. Now, see, this thing ha has, ha it goes around. What goes around comes around, because what you speak, you'll believe, because faith cometh by hearing, and, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, see, when Paul said that, he's talking about faith in God comes by hearing the Word of God. Turn that around. Faith in the devil comes by hearing the words of the devil. See the reciprocal truth of that. Faith in God comes by hearing the word of God. Faith in the devil comes by hearing the words of the devil. See, faith in the devil is called fear. It's, it's faith in reverse. And um, this man said, go, uh, Jesus said, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed the self same hour. Because the man released his faith, he decreed a thing. And it was established to him. Now, th now, this is the reason that we ought to confess what the Word of God says about us. Confess the promises of God. You see, your, your faith in the promise of God, whatever promise it is, whether it's salvation, healing, or whatever uh, financial blessing, whatever it is, usually rises no higher than your confession of the Word of God because there's a law of faith. He shall have whatsoever he saith. See, Mark 11, 23, 11, 24. Uh, Jesus said, Whosoever shall say unto the mountain. Now, talk about a mountain of adversity, most likely is what he's indicating. Or a uh, mountain of debt, uh, something that's hindering you. Whosoever shall say to the mountain, Be removed, be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart. Now, notice, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith. Now, notice he didn't just say what he said, those things which he saith. In other words, what he continually says. Believe that what he continually says will come to pass, for, and then he shall have. Let's, let's say it this way. Eventually he shall have whatsoever he saith. Then Mark 11, 24 uh, hooks up to that, says, therefore. Now, when you find the word therefore, stop and figure out why it's there, what it's there for. It means this is hooked to the preceding verse. Therefore, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. Now, the Greek says it, believe you have received them. That's the indication in the Greek. Believe you have received them, and ye shall have them. Now, notice, you didn't have it then, but because of the power of positive faith, based on the authority of the Word of God and the law of faith and how that principle of the law of faith works, he shall have What's ever he saying? Or he can have it by praying it. He can say it or he can pray it. And, and if you're going to pray it, you're going to say it. Another thing you need to understand about this, when you pray the desire, now notice he said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. In other words, you pray the desire. You don't desire to have the problem, so don't pray the problem. See, that, that produces negative faith. If you're always talking, if you're always talking uh, the problem, you're going to have great faith in the problem. Now, uh, we're not talking about, you know, just hiding your head in the sand. And some folks say that, well, you know, you're just hiding your head in the sand. No, no, we're doing what the Word of God says about it. We're going to put the accent on the positive and eliminate the negative. The Apostle Paul put it this way. Don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Well, the Word of God's good, isn't it? And, and sometimes the negative thoughts that comes by your carnal thinking or, or the devil affecting your carnal mind sometimes bring some things in your mind. You have to cast down those imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. But, but here in, in this chapter, in chapter 8 of Matthew, this man, through positive faith, declares that just speak the Word only and my servant will be healed. You know, that's the highest form of faith, that you believe God just based on the authority of the Word. Uh, not necessarily someone have to pray for you. It's all right for people to pray for you. But just get your healing based on the authority of the Word of God. The Word said it, proclaim it, believe it, and act on it. And I'll tell you, you can receive the promise of God. Now, we're talking about the power of positive faith. And uh, we, we've been here in Romans 8th chapter. Now, I, I want us to go to another passage of Scripture because uh, go to 2 Corinthians. And in 2 Corinthians, we, we find that uh, the Apostle Paul makes a statement that I, that I want to bring out here because uh, 
I've heard some people say sometimes, well, now, you know, all this positive teaching and positive faith. In fact, <laughs> did you know that uh, one time I was on radio, this has been many years ago, uh, in, in, in Peoria, Illinois, I was on radio, and uh, they, they put us off radio there because it was a religious station, and, uh, and uh, they, they didn't believe the way I was teaching. And uh, so we questioned them about why, why are they taking us off radio. And, and the only thing they said, it was just too much positive teaching. <laughs> now, now, you know, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around a statement like that. I mean, uh, you've got to get up there and preach negative stuff. Too much positive teaching. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, was not hiding his head in the sand when he, he but let me show you how he takes uh, the, accentuates the positive and eliminates the negative. Here in the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians, uh, verse 7, he said, We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency, the power of God, is of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Power of positive faith. He's, he's telling them how it is. Yeah, we've been in distress. We've been in trouble, but not in despair. We, we're, not, we're, we're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Yeah, he said these things happen to us, but he's accentuating the positive. You remember that old song years ago, let's accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative? There's a lot of truth in that, especially when it comes to the Word of God. He, he said, uh, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Now, what's he talking about? That the life that Jesus gave up and, and the life of Jesus, that resurrection life, might be manifest in his physical body to bring healing. That's, that's really what he's talking about, is to bring healing. Now, he says, uh, uh, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal body. Now, come over here to, to this uh, 13th verse. We have the same spirit of faith according as it, is, as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. So, uh, he's telling you that you're going to believe what you speak and you're going to speak what you believe, and you believe what you speak. We're talking about the power of positive faith. And I'll tell you, it'll cause you to enter into the blessing of God and the promise of God. It always is a blessing, regardless of what you think about it. It's a blessing of God. We're glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. To order the product offered on today's program, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.